Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So we've got some exciting news to bring to you guys. Uh, by the time you watch this video, it will have been published to the forums, but we're going to go over the Dev Diary uh, Amping Up Alliances. All right, and you guys, I'm going to show it to you so you can read it for yourself. I'm not going to go over every single thing in this document, just the ones that I'm the most excited about. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, the first things up, these are tools that are, as they say, foundational tools. So that means that they're going to be used both in Alliance War and Alliance Quest. All right, you're going to have battle group assignments. This is mostly for the leaders. You know, there have been so many times that someone has joined the wrong battle group, you know, especially if they're new. You know, like I'm in battle group two. I've been in battle group two for a long time. If I go to another alliance and I'm put in battle group one and it just so happens that we're running out of time and I go in, I'm probably going to go to battle group two because I've been doing it for over a year. Well, this won't stop that, but it can help because I'll know what my battle group assignment is. And when I go in there, I'll have visual aids as to what battle group I should be joining. And it won't stop me from joining the wrong battle group. It'll just make it a little bit more difficult to make a mistake, all right? You just have to pay attention. That's gonna be released tomorrow, uh, the 29th, okay? Uh, and I'm making this video obviously on a Sunday, but by the time you're seeing this, it'll be released today for you guys. All right, you got top alliance champions. This is very useful. I am so tired of having to take screenshots and then go in, put these X's on so that the officers can see my current roster and then what champions I'm currently using for alliance quest and alliance war attack, as well as my general questing team. This is gonna make it so much easier. OK, that's also being released today. Path assignments, same thing. Now, this one, it's still in the design phase. Um, they are aiming for this year, but there's no date yet. OK, and, you know, you have a lot of uh, spreadsheets. I've made one myself to handle the path assignments for everyone. Well, having that built in is going to be much, much nicer. Uh, same thing with defender placements. Now, uh, this is also in design, but I was one of the first in one of my alliances to actually lay out a spreadsheet for defender placements. I was very tired of rearranging the defense. We would have someone that was good at, you know, placing defense. I would take a picture. Then I created a spreadsheet and I said, everyone, Put your defenders where they're assigned. This was something new uh, that my alliance at the time was not doing. And when I was an uh, officer, I didn't want to have to keep doing that. All right. So I told them, do this. And it, you know, it took some getting used to. But after a bit, it ran smoothly every war. And I always told them, if you make a change, let me know and then we can redo it. OK, so having that built in also nice. All right. Code name AQ officer also in design uh, and they're aiming this one for next year. OK, um, and they're working on the features that will allow them to set up the next round. You know that in AQ uh, there are many variations. I forget how many variations there are um, and they will possibly be able to see what the next variations are so they can plan ahead of time. That's gonna make life so much easier. All right, so now this next section, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't care. All right, tell you that point blank, I don't care. I don't like Alliance War. Nothing that I see is gonna make me like Alliance War. There are people that love Alliance War, more power to them, and this season 19, I personally thought they should just scrap it, but 
they're actually being responsive. They actually have listened to the complaints. And before season 19 starts, there will be a round of tweaking to a lot of these nodes and combinations. They'll be toning some stuff down. So don't be too afraid of season 19. Okay, so they are changing things. All right, now you can read here what they said here. All right, and it's also going to be on the forums. All right. Now, this is something they had to mention because I know a lot of people were wondering about this. They're like, man, Kabam is not responsive. They said they were going to go in a new direction. This current iteration, they had it in works already before they listened to a lot of the feedback. This is the direction, but they're now going to redirect again. Okay. So. They want to make sure of that. And you see what's in bold right here? That is in bold. Before the start of season 19, we will be adjusting buffs and node combinations to address the most difficult and frustrating nodes on the new maps. They have gotten a lot of feedback from the content creator program as well as on the forums and everything. Okay. And they are listening. Now, what it's going to look like, we'll see. All right. Now, this last bullet point there uh, is an important point because there was a time where this was their philosophy. They did not intend those maps to be 100% completed, and they got a lot of flack for that. Well, they're explaining why they said that, but that now that is no longer the case. Okay, so it's a new mindset, a paradigm shift. We'll wait and see what it looks like, but again, I don't like war, so all these things don't really uh, matter to me. If they make it too much of a pain, then I will suggest to my alliance that we go to BG war. That way, people that love BG uh, love war, let them do it. I might join in every now and again, but I may decide not to, you know. But we'll see what it looks like uh, come season 19, and I will be recording videos. So we'll see. We'll see what it looks like. All right. You know, we have a map update. Uh, let's see the defense tactics. One of the things they did, they added the attacker bonuses. So if you met the certain criteria, you got a bonus as well as having the defense tactic. But we already know ebb and flow, um, stubborn, I think it is. These are some painful nodes. Well, they have said that they will be doing another round of tweaks and reworks. So let's hope that those will be addressed. Okay. But we'll see. Now I had a suggestion and I, I did make it on the uh, discord, but I didn't hear anything from them. I don't know whether they thought it was a good idea. Some of my fellow content creator program uh, members thought it was a good idea. But my idea was to have a limited number of buff or node deletes. These would be used only by the alliance leaders, and it would be per BG. So say, for example, you have three. Okay, that means that when you go in, if there is a particular node champion combination that is extremely difficult, you can delete that node. You still have to deal with the uh, defender. It'd be like um, the uh, buff delete in the side event quest. And you would only have a limited number that you could do that with. But, you know, like right now, we have a lot of node combinations and, and defender combinations that the developers didn't anticipate. They can't anticipate everything. But having something like that in, when you do put that Iron Man Infinity War or that Darkhawk, on those really, really bad no combinations for them, this would allow for, you know, a little bit more strategy. You know, now you would have a limited number. You could look over the map and you would see, okay, look, that right there, no way. So we can delete that one. I think that would be a great idea. It's not going to make me love Alliance War, but that would take a lot of the pain out. Okay. 
Um, they're going to update the matchmaking. You guys can uh, see that there. Uh, they're going to put more emphasis on war rating. Honestly, I don't know too much about all that. Like I said, I don't really care about war. All right. And uh, now here, what you're looking at here in the Alliance War Pain Point section, this is their goals. Okay. This is not something that they're absolutely going to do work on, but they are letting you know pretty much where their head is at, you know, how they're thinking. Okay. These are the outlining or governing principles that they're going to have moving forward. It doesn't mean, you know, if they mention this, like costs of wars are high down here, uh, given the competitive nature of seasons and map difficulty, balancing the current difficulty and complexity of wars would alleviate this stress. That doesn't tell you how they're going to balance it. It doesn't tell you whether they're going to reduce the cost or what they're going to do, but what that is, and it's not supposed to, what it is letting you know is that they see that this is a pain point and they're going to be addressing it. That's what you can take away from this list. Okay. So take a look at all of these. All right. And that's just pretty much where their head is at. Um, down here, they say, while the season 19 war refresh has not addressed most of these issues. See, they, they realize that it has not addressed those issues. We want to assure you that we are looking at specific short term solutions to address these pain points. So what that means, is that even though they're giving you the general where their head is at, they are still going to do something as more of a stopgap meth uh, uh, method uh, to address these pain points right now before they can roll out something that's going to address them long term. OK. Um, and then again, in bold, the solutions proposed above are just examples while we look into how feasible each of them are. Okay, so they're just brainstorming here. Uh, war future, again, don't really care, but I have it here for you guys to look through. We're not gonna go through all of this because these are, again, ideas that they are planning, okay? Nothing concrete, no dates or anything like that, but it'll let you know where their head is at. Now, we are getting to the section that I am actually excited about. I love Alliance Quest. Just like I hate Alliance War, I love Alliance Quest. And I'm excited for these changes, okay? So, Map 7 Rebalancing, okay? Mesmerize is on its way out. Hallelujah, okay? Let me tell you, I'm happy. Uh, in map seven, in my BG, there's this vision who has mesmerized and prove yourself and he's stun immune. I usually take that vision. I have Corvus, I bring in Proxima Midnight, and I can get three charges off of that fight. I have to max out my limber so that I can easily block when he evades and I get stunned. So I'm happy to see this. This is going to be a game changer. Okay. Can't stop. Won't stop. They're taking away Captain Marvel. I didn't really take that path. Now vivified and redouble determination. They are taking vivified from 200% to 100% power gain or combat power rate. Okay. And they're replacing problem champions, Korg and Killmonger. So let me explain. When Vivified first came out, that was my path. And I absolutely hated it. Um, I did it for a couple of weeks. And then I said, okay, you're going to have to get me off this path or else I am done. Okay. I was very upset with Kabam for putting a node like that in there. Hated it. Okay. So what we do now is... Someone else has the vivified path, but I still tend to take that vision that I mentioned earlier. And then I will take other fights on vivified. I'll take that um, Rhino. Uh, I think not Rhino. Um, Iron, uh, Iron Patriot. Uh, and I'll take uh, Korg. 
I also take Korg on Vivified with my Havoc. I am the designated Korg killer for my BG. Okay, so seeing that, love it. Killmonger was really the only pain, real pain on that path. In order for me to take Killmonger when I had Vivified, I needed to take that vision so that I could have those three um, charges and then I would just go in and I wasn't using the timeout method. I didn't even think about using it for that time. And I usually ended up having to use an item or two because of it, but I did not use the timeout. It would have made my life a whole lot easier, that's for sure, and I wouldn't have used any items. Um, but that Killmonger especially was annoying. And then on Vivified, on top of that, ooh, so very happy, okay. Um, they're also uh, switching out a bunch of problem champions from Mordo and War Machine to Captain Marvel and Magneto in a variant one with either alternate champions or a freshened up buff profile. Loving it. They're still testing and iterating. Uh, so we have to wait to see. But that is awesome news right there. All right. Energy. Look at this. Energy cap is going to increase from five to six. Beautiful, but that's not all. They're also increasing the starting amount of the Alliance Quest energy from three to four. But that's not, that's not all. They're also going to be changing energy timers from an hour to 45 minutes. Now that might not seem a lot, but take all of that in. All of that combined is huge. That is going to result in much speedier Alliance Quest running if you know your Alliance mates are on the ball. So I love that. That right there made me jump for joy. Okay, um, now that is being released next month. Okay, link nodes. They are making the following changes to uh, the link nodes in map six and seven. They're removing the first set of links and uh, restructuring the map six link nodes to flow more like map seven. Beautiful. That means that uh, when we go in, those who may not have the time, they might not be working, you know, and uh, they just don't have the time to start right away. They're not holding anybody up. And so we can move as fast as we can go in that first uh, section. A lot of times uh, how fast you can go in section one sets the pace for the entire quest. So that's actually really good news. Um, that's in design. There are no you know, launch window dates or anything like that. We also have this uh, mid-season update. Um, Let's see, uh, in July, they'll renew, um, introduce a brand new set of epic modifiers. They haven't said it, which ones they are. Uh, more honor reward milestones and mini boss changes. Okay. Uh, and then you'll see the uh, post uh, on their forums tomorrow, which might be today. Not sure. All right. And then here we go. They Here they're talking again, just like how they did with Alliance War. This is where their head is at for Alliance quests. Okay, so you can look over those. I'm not gonna go into each one of these, um, but that's very interesting. Okay, where their head is at, just look through, leave a comment if you have questions. Uh, not everything was uh, talked about in depth, so we still have questions as well. Okay, and as you can see down here, it says none of these principles have features attached yet or any release dates. Okay, so that's why I'm not going into them. They may get changed. Uh, they may change their direction. But until we have some more concrete information, it's here for you to read. Okay, and they also want these raid bosses. That's going to be interesting. I want to see what that looks like. All right. Um, and those are in design. No confirmed uh, launch window. Uh, same thing with the link node rework in design. You can read here. Now, one of the things that the link node reworks could be, and I'm not saying it is, but this was my understanding. Uh, when they talked about wanting to encourage 
players to interact with link nodes in a more meaningful way, what it might look like, providing buffs. So imagine you go to a link, a uh, link node, and you decide to fight with that link node up. You might get a buff that lasts for the rest of the quest. You know, maybe it, it gives you an attack boost. Think of incursions. Think of the hacks in incursions. Okay, you've got a lot of buffs that already are in the game that they could leverage here, but it's still in design, so they don't have any details, but that's what it could look like. Okay, so I'm excited about that. An undo button, control Z. Why didn't we have this before? I don't know, probably technical limitations. All right, it's in design, but oh my goodness, this has happened to me at least three times. And I felt so bad. One time, I know I tapped my correct um, portal, but it just did not register. And I went on a different path. I was so upset and I felt so bad, even though I was 99.9% .9 sure that I did not click the wrong portal. So having an undo, beautiful. Because when someone goes to the wrong path, that really messes up all the plans that the officers have taken the time to lay out. Now they have to redo things. You know, we've had this happen, like someone joined the wrong battle group and everybody has to freeze while we rework everything, you know? And this help system improvement. Now, I have gotten so frustrated with that help system and I know I'm not alone. I have actually gone on the uh, Discord and told them, please just disable it. Take it away from me. I don't care if you don't put anything in its place, get it away. That's how frustrating I found it to be. Uh, and I remember, I can't say uh, who all said this, but there were some from Kabam who agreed that they would love to see that just go away for right now until they could replace it. But of course, they didn't have the power to make that decision. But they were with me on that. Okay, so what's going to happen is a help all button. That's the main, the, the, the main takeaway from all of this is a help all button. Now they had, I don't know if you guys remember that, but they had a help all button once before and it brought the servers down. What that told me was that the coding for that feature was done badly. There is no way that should uh, create that much stress on the servers. If it was coded badly, I could see it. So it sounds like they finally got everything straight and it's going to come. I cannot wait. Okay. I would love that. Now there are other things that are not mentioned here that, uh, they have been talking about, but we cannot talk about those. Uh, but, Let's just say good things are coming, okay? Uh, I can't, I'm not going to hype it up or anything like that. I'm not a hype person, but I like where their head is at. That, that's all I can say. And keep in mind, I love Alliance Quest, so I'm hoping that it will turn out as well as it looks like it will. All right? And then uh, finally... They, they're, of course, they're saying they're hyped for the future of alliances and can't wait to reveal even more, of course. And then on Wednesday, they're going to take a deep dive into the future of champions. All right. So that's going to do it, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. This was informative. Hopefully um, uh, you've gotten some questions answered. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot that I could add. This is just me presenting, you know, like the news of, of what they were saying. You see, this is the document that I was given. And I don't have that much more information than what you see here. Uh, there were some conversations that went on about different things, and they might change direction on a couple of pain points. But this is what we were given. This is what um, they are releasing for right now. And then they're going to be releasing more. All right, so take care. Uh, click like if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. 
Let me know what you thought about the video, what you think about these changes, uh, especially that help all button. If for no other reason, the help all button. Click like for the help all button. Anyway, take care and you all have a blessed day.